Hi hey guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 25 of our PDD video series. And this part we're going to talk about find in set and best way to verify collections and spec flow tables. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 23 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. All right, so let's get started. Spec flow version 2.1. With SpecFlow version 2.1, we now have a very handy method to verify and SpecFlow table against an collection. Remember in those old days where we need to perform a lot of code to verify a SpecFlow table data against some kind of data that you want to verify? That is right now very very simplified with version 2.1 of SpecFlow. Well, where is this so useful? Consider a scenario something like this. Let's say we have a spec flow table in feature file, something like this. And we want to verify the enter data in the application UI via the spec flow table with the application database. Then we need to do many manual operation before something like this. We need to compare each and every column value of the spec flow tables manually from the table collection. Again, the table collection is something that we need to create to store all the spec flow value into that particular collection in a specific format. And then we need to compare with the database table value from another collection. So you're going to do two operations here. You're going to pull all the data from the spec flow table and put it in the collection. Again, the collection has to be converted into your own custom format. And then you need to retrieve the value out from a database table and put it into that collection. Now you have two collections altogether. And then you need to verify the collections value against these two collections. So it requires a lot of custom code, something like this. And you can see that I'm comparing the source table against the comparable table. So this is one of the code which I wrote for many different frameworks and it is available in our automation framework development with selenium c sharp cores so here this comparison is really really nagging because it requires a lot of coding operations but right now our life is made much easier with the introduction of specflow version 2.1 this method find in set method of assist namespace and this method is really really cool and I really like the matter of fact that whatever we discussed so far, the comparison operation is really made such an easy that you can just do in one line of code and your operation is all done. So let's see this in action and understand how things work. So for that I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. So this is one of our project SpecFlow parallel test that we have already discussed in our series and we have the source code completely available in our GitHub here selenium parallel sample so if you go here you can see there is a complete detail on how to download this source code and how to work with it and this is the same sample code that we have already discussed in our video series over here right so i have just pulled it from a github and it is available right here right now somewhere here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to this user detail form entry scenario basically i just want to prove the point that the find in set method is working with so fluent that it is much easier to verify a collection against a table from the feature file right that's the whole point so we don't really have to jump in and understand how this scenario given when and all these things are working because those are not the scope of this video and if you have those kind of questions you need to go back and watch from part 1 through part 24 all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to verify a value that we have entered in the UI of an application against the database of the application. Again, the database of the application doesn't exist. We're going to just create a mock database right now. So what I'm going to do is let's say I just want to verify and I verify the entered data user form details uh, in the application database something like this so this is going to be one of my step and i just need to verify the entered data in the ui against the database table that's it so this is the verification i'm going to do right now so this step is not implemented yet so we need to implement this particular step and i'm going to go over here to the step definition for this particular over here there we go and now we have a table here Right. So now we don't really have a database for our exit automation demo site. It's a dummy page that we 
as we know if you go over here exit automation demo site you can see that it's a very very simple static page nothing to do with the database itself but in order to mimic how the database verification that we do basically in real world I'm just gonna create a sample data so for that I'm just gonna create a class something like this and this class is the application under test database and we have a initial first name middle name and gender so this is pretty much the same that we have in here initial first name middle name and let's say your database have some other columns which we don't really have to verify we just have to verify these three columns we are just interested in only these three columns of the database table not the other irrelevant columns because in a database table there will be so many other columns like id and all those columns which is completely not relevant for our verification right so i'm just going to do that and now let me go over here and i'm going to create a data for this guy for creating the data is very very simple what i'm going to just do is let's say i'm going to create a mock data here so mock data so for that i'm going to create a list of aut database let's say mock aut data is equal to new list of database and I'm just gonna get new AUT database and here I'm gonna add the value for this let's say first name is equal to Karthik and initial is equal to K because I'm just gonna create the value pretty much exactly like the value that we have in the feature file table over here see Karthik initial is K middle name is K as well so the middle name is equal to let's say K right so I'm gonna keep all this value in here and let's say we have some other value as well but as of now just let's play with only one value right so I'm gonna just hold it something like this now that's it this is the data which is coming from the database let's consider this right and now I'm gonna verify this particular collection the mock AUT because right now it is in a list right so it's a collection basically so something like this I'm gonna verify this data is available in this particular collection the table of data collection so for doing that as I already said we can easily do using the find in set method so for that you have this do table dot there is a find in set method here right you can just pull that in here and you can just pass the enumerable type so the enumerable type is basically our mock aut collection data right so i'm just going to pass in here in about so let's hit a breakpoint over here i'm just going to save it and now if i try to debug this but before debugging i'm really not interested in doing all this stuff because basically I'm just playing around with the mock data right so let's just do control KC and debug this letter test even though it is just commentary it's gonna open the browser because the hook actually has a browser so I'm just gonna leave it for now you can see that the hook actually has a data in there but it's okay all right so now let's see what is there in the data of the table you can see that the table has the initial first name middle name K Karthik and K Similarly, our mock AUT has a count of 1 and it has Karthik K K. Gender is basically null because we have not supplied any value in here. Right? So now the value that we have in the database, the mock database, is pretty much matching to the data of the table coming from the feature file of the spec flow. So let's do a step over. And if we go over here to the result, you can see that this guy actually has Karthik null KK, which means the data which is available in the database is actually being returned to us in the result because this is actually matching the value from this particular table against this particular mock AUT collection. And if you don't believe me, if this is really working, let's do this. Let's change this K to maybe KK. I'm just gonna save it. And now if I just try to debug this particular scenario you'll understand what is going to really happen okay now we are in here again i'm going to do a step over this time and this time what will be the output of it basically you expect that only that particular column is being mismatched or the whole value itself is going to be null well the second is true 
If we go over here this time, the result is actually null. And the reason is because the collection value of the mock AUT data is not really matching with the value within the table collection. Because table is basically a collection, right? It's an enumerable type. So right now it is not matching. And that's the result that it is showing us null in here. And it is really, really awesome because we are not even writing a single piece of code in here. All the heavy lifting operations are being happening behind the scene using this particular find and set method because I have wrote the custom method and it's really, really painful to write those particular operations by converting the value from a database table into a custom collection and storing into the collection and then converting a value out from a spec flow table and storing it into a custom collection. It's really a pain job. But this one is really awesome. So find and set is really working. So you can also play around with some other values as well. Let's say if you have like two values in here, somewhere like this. And let's say I'm gonna change this to a correct value this time. Okay, and first name, let's say I'm gonna put it Prashant and this value doesn't exist yet. So I'm just gonna create one and let's try to debug this and see what's gonna happen. So let's say I'm gonna retrieve two tables row from the particular database and see what is going to happen. And now, what is the expectation that you think? Is it going to be returning you the value that we saw before, like Karthi, K and K? I don't really think so. If you go over here this time, you can see the value is going to be null again. And the reason is because there are two values or two rows of the particular table, mock AT database data, but the table actually has only one row. So the row itself is not matching and that's why it is failing. So how to overcome this problem? And for that, there is a very, very fairly easy solution available, which is nothing but this. There is something called find all in set method. Again, it's returning you the I enumerable type. So I'm gonna select that. And this time, even though you have two rows in here, something like this, you can still get at least the unmatching row that you're expecting. So let's do and step over again. Result is going to be, see, it's not null this time, but it's returning you the matching row of that particular data collection which is available. So again, this is really a value added solution that is available in SpecFlow 2.1. And I hope this is really, very really helpful as well. So once again, guys, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.